Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. Today we're going to be taking a look at how I quilted Undulation. It is the latest release in our Stashing with Stephanie club. If you haven't heard of Stashing with Stephanie, we hear all the time from our subscribers that it's the best subscription club out there for quilters. It allows you to get exclusive discounts on quilt shop quality cotton. We only send out a brand new modern quilting fabric. So if that's something that's hard for you to find, we can get you something that you're going to love here. And then we also release a pattern that I've designed that is inspired by the fabric every month. The idea is to give you some ideas on what you can do with it. You get access to our previous patterns that we released and you get special discounts and first dibs on buying additional fabric. We offer what's called a finishing kit. So our subscribers, if they really love the project, can get exactly what they need to turn their bundle into a full quilt kit. And a lot of folks took advantage of that. We, I think, by the time this video comes out, we might be sold out. We're gonna see if we can get some more. Sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. So go join the wait list if we are sold out and if we get enough people on it, then we will look into getting some additional fabric. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at some of the quilting. We always start uh, by taking a peek at the thread. So for this quilt, uh, there was a good chunk of low volume fabrics uh, within the piece block. So so like right here, this one looks pretty low volume as does this one and this one here. So it's a offset log cabin, which means that the fat quarter strips were wider than the background strips. So I wanted to really in my quilting separate the two halves of the block and treat it differently from the outside part to, and really just kind of make some waves that undulated around, get it, undulation, uh, through here. So that way there was a clear textural difference between the blocks and the background. So that way we could really get this to stand out because some of these really stand out. These stand out really well. This one and this one, not so much. So I wanted to add quilting to help make that happen. And this ended up working out really well. Um, so typically, whenever I'm doing this, I pick a really light thread that kind of blends with everything. But because I wanted to help it stand out, I went for a bolder choice this time. I ended up going with this gold thread. I typically only use it on like K for Alice and Glass because it really looks good with those colors. But it also really looked good here because it looked good with the browns and these sort of goldens that sort of worked throughout the entire, uh, all three different colorways. So it really helped add sort of like a shadow to everything to help tie that together and differentiate it. Now for the background, I stuck with my trusty uh, linen thread for that because it just blended really nicely. I usually am gonna go with like a linen, a pure white or a ruby light gray most of the time because I like the quilting to just kind of fade into the background in most circumstances, but occasionally like in this instance when it was really worth adding a little bit of extra to it to make that pop, uh, this one definitely was a good one to go with. All right, so let's, oh, and for this one, I did do white for the background or for the backing for all of it, for that bobbin. And the reason why is because this is just so, I mean, it's light enough to where I was able to get away with it if I would have had some pokies going through and then everything will look nice and great from both sides. So let's go ahead and take a peek at the quilting play-by-play -play, and I can kind of talk you through the decisions I was making as I was making them. Hey, so I was just doing a live for our Facebook group uh, for Stashing with Stephanie and I realized I didn't include this so we're gonna just put it in with editing and you won't see my face. Basically, when I loaded this quilt on, I did it sideways. So typically you load it and you quilt top to bottom and this one I quilted side to side. So I was quilting just from the bottom to the top instead of from left to right. And I did that on purpose. I did it so when I did this undulation part that I was able to do that entirely in one pass and one smooth uh, line going from top to bottom of the quilt. If I would have done it the other way, it would have been a lot of starts and stops all the way along. It would just been a big mess. So often I do that when I want to have one continuous line going from the top to the bottom. I'll just load that quilt on sideways. It works great every time. All right, so I am starting here in between two blocks. So these blocks kind of came together to make a cross unit. And so what I wanted to do 
was treat them all as one big quilted section. So I'm just kind of doing a wavy thin line out to the points. And I always kind of did that inner point and I just kind of wiggled my way to it, stopped, changed direction, and then wiggled my way back to the center of that block. And by doing this, I just kind of wiggled my way back and forth and it ended up looking really cool when it was all done. Like it, it really is looks sharp uh, when it's all done. But as you can see, it's really simple. A wavy line is one of the easiest free motion stitches you can do. And all I did was aim for that point and then aim back to the center of that block. So in this case, it's the corner, uh, but it's gonna look like the center of a large like sunburst once it's all said and done. Uh, these really kind of look like little rays coming out. All right, so now we're getting to the other sort of quarter of the block. So again, we're just aiming for that point. There really is not a rhyme or reason to how I am doing the waves. I'm just kind of, I'm not doing giant movements. I'm just doing real subtle ones uh, because I just want to create that texture. And this is why I really love the glide thread because you can quilt really closely together and when we're getting to that center block like there is a lot of traveling going over threads there but it really looks good there's not a lot of thread build up like you see with some brands and that's why i switched from exclusively using cotton thread to going with the glide which is a poly um, because it worked a whole lot better all right now at this point i quilt on a lenny a pqs lenny and my throat usually is enough to do exactly what I need to do with it. But this time was like one of the few times in, I think maybe the only time in the time I've had the machine when I could not get my entire block, it was a large block in, in one pass. So what I did was I had to stop the machine and then rotate the machine a little bit, just roll the rollers back a little bit. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm quilting back and I'm gonna roll it back. In later ones, once I kinda got the hang of it a little more, what I would do is I would just kinda quilt into one of the stitches and then I could quilt back out. But you're seeing this nice big pause here because I'm, I'm literally rolling it forward a little bit and rolling it back a little bit on the long arm frame. Now, if you're doing this on your home sewing machine, it's, it's not the same issue because you just smooth the quilts around a little bit, but all long armors know you've got so much to work with with your sewing machine throat and I needed like two more inches for this one and I didn't have it. And so, you know, it was a little bit of a pain going back and forth, but it really wasn't like the end of the world. All right, so at this point, I'm just keeping going, doing the exact same thing. Just I'm doing the second block now, which ends up looking like the second corner of our star. And it really just really looks cool when it's all said and done because it just is like radiating out. That is like the fun part of modern settings is you really get to have some fun in the background with your quilting. And I definitely was able to do that with this one. All right, so let's just watch this on fast forward. We also uh, filmed some vertical video from the side. We've been doing a bunch of shorts of on YouTube and TikTok. And so maybe we can show a little bit of that as well so you can kind of see me at the long arm and how I'm moving throughout the block. So this is when I switched over to that gold thread and I just did really gentle curves as I was going along. I wanted it to kind of just look like a topographic map where you kind of, you can see the ebbs and flows of things. So I'm just going up and down as I'm going through and I'm following the lines of the block. You can see here, it just goes up and down and it creates that wave going through the quilt because this block is really fun because it really kind of looks like circles and looks like arcs even though it's all made from 
uh, squares and rectangles, but you're able to help accentuate that with your quilting, which is why I made those nice smooth arcs uh, going from side to side. Well, they're not super smooth. The curves are smooth, but the arcs themselves are very wavy. So you can see this is just really a very easy wavy line. Like there's nothing fancy about it. I'm just following the curve of those blocks and it ends up looking really cool. So I'm rolling at this point um, the quilt. I'm rolling it down just one uh, inch. So that way it's down at the bottom and that way I'm able to just quilt the next line without too much fuss. Now I originally was quilting these about an inch, an inch and a half apart and I didn't like the texture. I thought that it was not dense enough um, to match the density of the rays in the background. All right, so here we are. We're gonna quilt the next line. This one is going to be up maybe about an inch. And eventually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna fill in in between all of those lines. So that way I can create additional texture and get it a little bit more dense. Now that's 100% your personal preference. You can quilt as densely as you like or as open as you like, as long as you are meeting the minimum qualifications for your batting. So each batting is gonna tell you you need to quilt this close together or it's gonna come apart over time. Um, in mine, I, I definitely was dense enough for the batting but not to match it because when you get, if you ever get your quilt judged, what they'll do is they'll look for even density in your quilting and and it also will wear better over time if you have even density over the course of the quilt. So I wanted it to be a little bit thicker. I could have even gone thicker than I did and match that density a little bit more. Um, but what you saw there was going through two lines and then later on I went in and I filled in in between all of those again just to help match that density and, and keep it the way I wanted it to be. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope it gives you some ideas. I hope it demystifies the process of quilting for you. I think a lot of times it can be really intimidating, especially when you see something like this that's just such a sweeping arc or some of these really cool um, stars. It's not hard. It is a wavy line stitch, which is very beginner friendly. Um, the only deliberate thing about it is where the waves are going. So in this case, I was going around the block to fit that and in this case I was trying to get out and hit the points and come back to the center but there really is not a lot of advanced skill to this you just need to be comfortable in where you're going with your machine and that's it you know you just want to try and keep it smooth you want to try and hit your lines you want to keep your density as as even as you can but it's not a a, a very difficult skill to learn. It is something that you absolutely can figure out and you can do on your own and you don't need a stencil or anything fancy for it. You just need to practice a little bit and then you'll be good to go. All right, so you can get the pattern undulation over at our website, shop.quiltagesamas.com. You can check out Stashing with Stephanie and join that if you want. Um, if you join by the end of the month, then you'll get your first bundle at the middle of next month. We ship those around the 20th of the month. If you join after the first, then your next bundle won't come until September. So uh, we do that so that we know exactly how many to prepare and we make sure we have enough fabric for you guys, but not way too much. Um, and check that out because this time like we just did not have a lot of fabric left over this time and our subscribers ate it all up because they get first dibs and we are join the wait list because if we get enough people on the wait list we will reorder some fabric if if not you know that's just another good reason to be on the club because our members were able to grab theirs and get it first so check that out over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com well until next time happy quilting <music>